The other day, I gave you guys my breakout player picks for the upcoming NHL season. Now, today, I want to give you guys a list of players that I feel like need to bounce back in 2024. These are players that, in my opinion, vastly underperformed this past season relative to the expectations that I personally had for them. As always, I want to know what you guys are thinking, so if you think I missed anybody or if there's any players that you would have included that I didn't talk about in this video, if you made a list like this, let me know who those players are down below. If this is your first time checking out the channel and you want more NHL content, content just like this all year long, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So with that all being said, let's go ahead and get the most obvious one out of the way first, Jonathan Huberto of the Calgary Flames. The Kachuk Huberto trade was probably the biggest story of the entire offseason last year. It may be the biggest trade of the past decade. And it's a trade that at the time, a lot of people, including myself, thought that the Calgary Flames did really well given the circumstances. They didn't really have a whole lot of leverage in the situation. Everybody knew that Matthew Kachuk wanted to be traded. He wasn't going to sign a long-term extension in Calgary. So the fact that they were able to land a conditional first, a prospect, a top pairing defenseman, and an elite winger coming off of a 115-point season was really impressive. Despite losing Johnny Gaudreau to free agency and trading Matthew Kachuk heading into this past season, the Calgary Flames roster still looked really good. Some people even believe that after the Nazem Kadri signing, the Calgary Flames actually improved last offseason, and at the time, that wasn't too crazy of an argument to make. And then, of course, this past season actually happened, and it was a complete disaster for the Calgary Flames, not only did they miss the playoffs, but Jonathan Huberto put up the lowest points per game number he's put up in a single season since his third year back in 2015, going from a 115 point season in Florida to 55 points for the Flames in 79 games. That is the biggest season to season point drop off in NHL history, which is insane. That's not a record you want to have. If the Calgary Flames want to get back to being a legit threat in the Western Conference, I think it's imperative for Jonathan Jonathan Huberto to bounce back this upcoming season. I'm not saying he has to be a 115 point guy like he was in his final season with the Panthers, but no matter who his line mates are, where he's playing, who his coach is, this is a guy that at the very least you expect to be around a point per game. If what we saw from Jonathan Huberto this past season is going to be the new norm for him going forward, then his contract is quickly going to be looked at as one of the worst in the entire league. He makes $10.5 million a season through 2031. Moving along now to the next player, on my list, we have the first of three goaltenders we're going to talk about in this video, Jack Campbell of the Edmonton Oilers. Last summer, as a UFA, Jack Campbell signed a five-year, $25 million deal with Edmonton, and his first year with the team was definitely interesting. When you look at his numbers on the season as a whole, he has a great win-loss, 21-9-4, but a 3.41 goals against and an 8.88 save percentage is abysmal. There was stretches throughout the season where Jack Campbell would look really good, string a couple of great starts together, but the consistency just wasn't there, and ultimately he'd lost his starting job to Stuart Skinner in just his first year with the team. Luckily for the Oilers, they do have somebody like Stuart Skinner, who was one of the better rookies in the entire NHL this past season, is locked up to a very team-friendly contract at a cap of just 2.6 mil through 2025-26. If they didn't have somebody like Stuart Skinner, then I feel like there would be a lot more pressure on Jack Campbell to bounce back. That being said, you still don't want to be paying, you know, a borderline unusable goaltender $5 million for the next four four seasons, and at times this past season, Jack Campbell was exactly that, unusable. In all likelihood, I feel like Jack Campbell will be starting next season as the Edmonton Oilers backup, and yeah, obviously you don't want to be paying a backup goaltender $5 million a season, but it makes it a lot easier of a pill to swallow when your starting goaltender, like I mentioned, has such a team-friendly deal. I definitely have faith in Jack Campbell's ability to bounce back and at the very least be a solid 1B option for the Edmonton Oilers in net, and it is a really good sign that, you know, the last we've seen of Jack Campbell, he looked really good in the playoffs. Obviously, it was a small sample size. Stuart Skinner started the majority of the Oilers' playoff games, but when Jack Campbell was in there, he looked really good, and there was even some Oilers fans, you know, clamoring for him to get more starts because of how good he looked in the playoffs. Just imagine if Jack Campbell can, you know, find his game again and get back to being the goaltender we saw him be for the Maple Leafs in 2021, then the Oilers could have, you know, one of the better one-two punches in net in the entire Western Conference on their hands. Continuing on now, next up on my list, we have Tanner Janot of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Tampa Bay acquired Janot at the most recent NHL trade deadline in a deal that at the time was heavily scrutinized. For those of you that need a little refresher on what the details of that trade were, the Tampa Bay Lightning acquired Tanner Janot in exchange for Cal Foote, a top 10 protected 2025 first round pick, a 2024 second round pick, a 2023 third, fourth, and fifth round pick. Just a massive haul for the Nashville Predators, especially considering the fact that when this trade happened, Tanner Janot was 
you know, having a down year, at least compared to his rookie season where he scored 24 goals in 81 games. Now, yes, when it comes to Tanner Janot, there's a lot more to his game than the offense. Of course, he's incredibly physical. He's going to stick up for his teammates. He's probably one of the best pound for pound fighters in the league. He's a good four checker. But basically what I just described to you is a bottom six. I'll say power forward because I wouldn't say he's just a goon. He's not, you know, in the same kind of realm as Ryan Reeves or anything like that. But he's a bottom six power forward who had you no know, unsustainably high finishing numbers as a rookie. Ideally, those aren't the kind of players that you give up five draft picks for. And after the deadline, he played 20 regular season games with the Lightning, had just one goal in those 20 games, got into three playoff games and was pointless. This summer, the Tampa Bay Lightning did kind of double down on their Tanner Janot bet here, signing him to a two-year deal with an AAV of 2.665 mil. If Tanner Janot has another season like the one that he just had, then this is a deadline move that is going to be looked back at as probably one of the most questionable of the past decade. Tampa Bay could definitely use a bounce-back season from Janot. I'm not saying he has to, you know, score at quite the pace he did as a rookie, but at least be in that 15-ish goal range, especially considering all the depth Tampa Bay lost this offseason with Ross Colton being gone, you know, Alex Kalorn as well in the whole fourth line, Maroon, Perry, Belmar. Players are going to have to step up. Guys are going to have to pick up slack. And I feel like Tampa Bay is really banking on Tanner Janot being one of those guys. Next up on my list, we have another member of the Calgary Flames goaltender, Jacob Markstrom. Jonathan Huberto wasn't the only massive disappointment for the Flames this past season. Markstrom is coming off of probably the worst full season he's had in his NHL career at 2.92 goals against an 8.92 save percentage. And this is followed a season in which he was a Vesna Trophy finalist. Again, similar to what I said about Jonathan Huberto, it's the same deal here with Markstrom. If Calgary wants to be a legit threat in the Western Conference, you need better goaltending than what you got this past season from Markstrom. And when it comes to Markstrom, I feel like there might be a fire lit under him because there's somebody by the name of Dustin Wolf who's probably going to be pushing for a roster spot in training camp. Dustin Wolf is expected to be the future in net for the Calgary Flames. I think he's the real deal. The numbers he's put up in the AHL over the past few seasons are undeniable and that future may come sooner rather than later if Jacob Markstrom doesn't bounce back this season. I have faith that he will because when you look at his career as a whole, he's consistently been an above average starter. That being said, he is 33 years old now, so who knows, maybe this past season was just the start of the decline for Jacob Markstrom. Moving along now to the next player on my list, this one may be a little bit controversial. I have Alex Dabrinkit of the Detroit Red Wings. Alex Dabrinkit is coming off of, I would say, a down year with the Ottawa Senators compared to the rest of his career. He had 27 goals in 82 games, which is the second lowest goal total he's put up in a single season in his career. I'm not somebody who looks that deep into plus minus numbers, but to break it was a minus 31 this past season on a Senators team that wasn't bad, so that's certainly not good. Alex to break it got his wish this offseason to go home to Michigan and play for the Red Wings. Now, it's not like the Red Wings gave up the farm to get to break it. I think they actually got a pretty good deal, but still a first and a fourth round draft pick, a prospect, and a guy in Kubelik who scored 20 goals for you this past season. That's not nothing, especially considering how how starved for goal scoring and finishing ability the Red Wings are. If Debrickett has another season, like the one that he just had, you know, is in that 25-ish goal range, I feel like that's going to be looked at as a disappointment by a lot of Red Wings fans. Now, Debrickett is definitely going to be put in a position to succeed. I fully expect him to start the season on the Red Wings' top line with Dylan Larkin. He's going to be on the top power play unit. Despite not playing a game yet for the Red Wings, he's already, I would say, their trigger man. He is the best natural goal scorer on the team. So expectations heading into his first season with the Red Wings are definitely pretty high. And now finishing out the video with the final player on my list, we have goaltender Thatcher Demko of the Vancouver Canucks. Statistically, Thatcher Demko just had the worst season of his career, a 3.16 goals against, a 901 save percentage, a negative 1.49 goals saved above expected. He was also injured for a good chunk of the season as well. All in all, just a very forgettable year for the Vancouver Canucks and especially for Thatcher Demko. When you look at this Vancouver Canucks roster as it stands right now, heading into next season, it doesn't look bad. I think the forward group group actually looks pretty good have my concerns about their blue line, but a poor blue line can definitely be masked by unbelievable goaltending. And we know that Thatcher Demko is capable of being a fantastic starter. If Thatcher Demko can bounce back and get back to being the goaltender he was in the 21-22 season, would anybody be that shocked to see Vancouver squeak into the playoffs? But obviously, if Thatcher Demko doesn't bounce back, then I think the Vancouver Canucks could be in for another forgetful season. So that is going to wrap up today's video, going over my list of players that I feel like need to bounce back in the 
2023-24 NHL season. Like I said at the beginning, I always want to know what you guys are thinking, so let me know what your list would look like down below in the comments. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it a like. That's the best way to show your support. And most importantly, if this was your first time checking out the channel and you want more NHL content just like this all year around, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll talk to you all soon.